So I'm very happy to be uh, uh, giving this uh, uh, talk here on this wonderful occasion of uh, uh, celebrating Spenta's contributions to science and his success as an institution builder in India. And uh, believe me, when I say I know personally that that's not a, an easy task at all. Um, everyone in the morning, all the speakers have talked about the uh, tremendous energy and uh, passion that Spenta uh, always brings to science. Uh, as a collaborator over the last three and a half decades uh, in TIFR, uh, I have seen that passion and energy from very close. Uh, and uh, admired it and been inspired by it. Um, I'm therefore very happy uh, to, uh, in fact, indeed feel privileged to be speaking about uh, the scientific contributions of Spenta. Now, I, I understand that some of you here may know them already very well, so perhaps this is the time for them to catch up on, uh, on, on jet lag. For the rest of you, uh, let me let me start. Spenta uh, started with his graduate studies uh, in the in New York in the City College under the guidance of Munji Sakita, and he spent five years there between seventy three and seventy eight, and wrote a thesis on. Uh, canonical quantization of non-abelian gauge theory in the Schrodinger picture, applications to monopoles and instantons. The basic themes on which he worked during this period uh, were essentially quantization of gauge theories, uh, correct treatment of surface terms in a gauge independent manner, gauge fixing problems, uh, and this, uh, this, this genre of uh, problems. And uh, from this period, um, I have picked up two papers which I think are very important. Uh, the first one, which uh, uh, is uh, the first paper to discuss the role of asymptotic gauge transformations in a non-abelian gauge theory, uh, is, is this here, the surface term in gauge theories with Gervais and Sakita. So this paper actually uh, showed how uh, surface uh, terms can be correctly treated. Uh, in, in gauge theories. The other paper that I have picked up is this paper with Yonea on the role of surface variables in vacuum structure of Yang Mills theory. And this paper discusses, uh, gives a discussion of theta vacua in different gauges. Uh, that was an important question then to understand whether the vacuum structure of gauge theories is independent of, of the gauge in which you're working. And uh, in the course of this paper, it, working out this paper, uh, Yonea and uh, Spenta came, uh, wrote down equations uh, for uh, gauge transformation, uh, which, uh, for which they presented solutions, multiple solutions. And this, uh, this sort of uh, ambiguity in, in, uh, in the gauge transformation, uh, solutions of gauge transformation is what we today now know as Gribov ambiguity. Basically, they, uh, they, had, uh, they had the solutions to the equation, uh, which Gribau uh, almost a year later uh, presented in that. After the uh, New York period, Spenta went to Chicago as a postdoctoral researcher. And I know that Spenta's thinking was mainly influenced there by Nambu and Karanoff. He carried these influences from New York and Chicago uh, with him to India, and these were uh, to continue to shape his future scientific work in India. And in this period, I, I think, I believe that this was the most important formative period for Spenta. Uh, and in this period, he worked on, uh, as you can see, very uh, the problems that were at that time burning problems in gauge theories, non-perturbative properties of gauge theories, uh, especially confinement. And he used a variety of tools, lattice gauge theory, large end methods, quenched large end, etc. So 
I have picked up a few papers from this period uh, that I think are very important. Uh, the first of this, uh, which uh, basically indicates that, that the problem of confinement was something that he had been, he had started thinking about very seriously. And this paper is the, is the work with uh, Eguchi on variational approach and duality in strong coupling. Basically, what they do in this period is to think of uh, meson as made up of two qu uh, QQ bar with a string stretched between. And on a lattice, they look at all possible strings stretching between these mesons and uh, write down a variational wave function and then, uh, and then uh, uh, min minimize energy with that wave function to write down a string-like equation for the amplitudes of each, each of those flux strings. So that was the one. And then next, Spenta went on to look at um, the Dyson Swinger approach to large n in, in very generality, which could be applied to essentially from uh, spin systems to, uh, to field theories. And, uh, and uh, in this work, he, uh, in this work, he, gave a very careful treatment of uh, overlapping uh, loops, uh, of uh, intersecting loops uh, on a lattice, and uh, presented uh, a loop equation, which was in some sense a refinement of the equations presented by Makienko and Migdal, uh, which were not uh, general enough to be applied to any, any type of intersection uh, of, the, of the loop. So this treatment was very careful. And it showed that you could actually write down a loop equation provided you, you considered the entire class of intersecting loops that you could get. So in a sense, it, it gave a regularized version, a properly regularized version of the uh, loop equation. After this, Spenta went on to, uh, to directly attack, basically, confinement using the idea that had been uh, already proposed, uh, which is uh, that uh, uh, the, the uh, duals, that of a dual superconductor, that the vacuum in uh, confining gauge theories is a dual superconductor in which uh, uh, monopoles condense and, and that leads to charge confinement. And this work, which he did with Sumit Das, we heard from Shumit in the morning. Uh, I think this was the first work that uh, they did together. In this work, what uh, they showed was, uh, in fact, uh, essentially they showed that um, uh, a plasma of an octet of SU3 monopoles in an SU3 gauge theory uh, leads to confinement of quarks in fundamental representation. And that sort of corrected uh, a certain error in, in, a, in a classic paper of Poliakov in which uh, he had tried to argue that half integer charge monopoles can find integer charge quarks in SU2 theory, uh, which we now know is not, is not right. The next two important papers were on the large n quantum mechanics and large n two dimensional gauge theory. Um, the, the, this is the paper that we have heard in the morning about the gross witten wadia transition paper. Uh, and this is the paper that we know is, uh, has became a basis for double scaling limit in the C equal to one matrix model. Uh, this paper uh, is the one that, uh, that has the third order phase transition um, that we now know as GWW transition. Actually, there is a little, little story here which you can read uh, in uh, our conversations with Spenta, which is available on the uh, Spenta Fest website. And that has to do with an earlier work which he had done. And uh, I will not say more, I will just let you read that story. As you can see that during these four postdoc years in Chicago, Spenta was really working on some of the most important problems of the times. Some of them, like confinement, are actually with us still today. 
And I think it is here that he was acquiring, uh, perhaps without realizing it, the skills and the courage to take on bigger responsibilities, which actually came immediately soon after he joined TIFR as faculty in 82. So at TIFR, except for the initial couple of years, he has largely worked on string theory. These initial two years are, are the ones in which uh, I, we uh, met and I got to know him and uh, we began collaborating. So this was the first product of that collaboration. Uh, Penta knew about Witten's beautiful paper on topological aspects of Esmino term and uh, wondered how such a term could arise in QCD from, uh, from the basic QCD uh, gauge theory. Um, so basically, the, these two these papers arose out of that investigation, uh, in which uh, the idea uh, was uh, that a confining gauge theory has a mass gap, and therefore perhaps one could think of integrating out the gluonic degrees of freedom and think of an effective interaction between quarks. And then, uh, then the task was to, to write down the most general possible uh, nonlinear uh, fermionic action that would have basic symmetries uh, of QCD and uh, be the simplest terms that one could write down uh, to capture the physics at energies lower than the confining, than the confining scale or the, the mass gap. So we did that. and. And then the issue was how to, uh, uh, so that model turns out to be just the simple Nambu journalistic model, but now written for quarks. Uh, and, and then the question was how to get the anomalous Vesumino Witten term out of this model. Today, uh, we know that's very, it's very familiar to us that this term uh, comes out of the, um, the, uh, the Jacobian of uh, chiral transformations on the fermionic measure. But at that point, it was a, it was, it took quite some work to figure all that out and write down a differential equation for the Jacobian in terms of the, uh, for, in terms of variations of the pionic uh, or, or the mesonic fields, and and then integrate that equation to get the full West Mino Witten term. This work was done in, in these papers, and then Spenta went on with his uh, students to study the large and baryonic uh, collective excitations around this uh, solitonic solution um, uh, in, in the skirm model and using uh, this, uh, uh, this low energy effective action that was obtained here, uh, they, they worked out the spectrum for collective excitation. After this, Essentially, by this time, basically, the world was swept over by string theory. <laughs> and uh, so essentially, all the work after this is in the area of string theory. So once again, uh, as in, in the Chicago period and before that, we find that his research over the years, uh, he's basically done his research over the years on, on some uh, themes. And these themes uh, are initial uh, investigation of the underlying principles of string theory. Um, and then going on to look at some simpler solvable models to understand uh, you know, properties of uh, string theory. And then eventually uh, study black holes, because that's one of the most important problems in theoretical physics, to understand the puzzles of black holes. Uh, using various tools, including the, uh, the famous ADS-CFT correspondence of Malda Sena. So some of the papers that I have picked up uh, uh, are here in this and the next few transparencies. Spenta wrote this paper with his students on conformal invariance and string theory in compact space. Uh, where this was one of the first, in fact, the first paper, I think, 
from TIFR on string theory. Uh, and in this paper, they proposed that perhaps the organizing principle in string theory is conformal invariant. And they showed that uh, on compact spaces, this leads to this uh, leads to consistent string propagation. They also studied um, the renormalization of uh, vertex operators in a very detailed paper and, uh, and showed that by imposing Urazoro conditions, uh, once again, one gets equations uh, that consistently, uh, that, are, that, uh, that are statements of consistency of string diagram. A similar uh, um, investigation in non-critical string theories, again, uh, led to a similar uh, uh, conclusion that conformal invariance is the underlying principle. However, with a little twist here, uh, in non-critical string theories, basically conformal invariance is imposed by uh, integrating over the two-dimensional metric. And, uh, so the, so the Liouville mode becomes a dynamical variable, and uh, the, uh, it turns out that you can uh, interpret it uh, as a space-time direction. And this is what was show, proposed uh, in, in this paper. It's an important interpretation that takes, uh, that actually makes non-critical strings uh, into a string. The same conclusion was confirmed in two different gauges. One is the conformal uh, gauge, and the other is the light cone gauge, uh, using the nizhnik polyakov zomolochikov formalism, operator formalism. Uh, one showed that, uh, that uh, and with two-dimensional uh, quantized gravity in picture, one showed that the d equal to 26 bosonic string uh, amplitudes were recovered. Uh, by treating the surviving mode of the metric, two-dimensional metric, as a dynamical mode. And uh, in this other paper, a similar type of picture emerged for more general backgrounds. All of this was done in flat space. Here, one treated more general backgrounds, and then the dressing of the background fields uh, gave rise to uh, a consistent, uh, a consistent quantization uh, only when the dressed field satisfied space-time uh, equation, classical space-time equation. By 1990, uh, uh, it, it, it uh, the, the matrix models had become very popular because they seem to provide a handle, uh, a sort of solvable handle on uh, examples of string theory. And in this context, the first uh, uh, important contribution that came out of uh, Spenta's uh, group uh, was uh, the uh, first discussion of double trace operators, which changed the critical behavior of uh, the matrix model, random matrix model under question. Uh, we heard a little bit about it from Igor in the morning. And uh, after this, uh, a very intense study of the C equal to one matrix model, uh, a program of intense study of C equal to one matrix model developed because this uh, model is dual to two dimensional string theory. Uh, it was believed that Studying this model, which could be solved uh, at least exactly in the large n, would uh, teach us something about string theory. So, uh, um, uh, so this model uh, um, can be written down in terms of uh, uh, free fermions uh, and uh, that uh, free non-relativistic fermions, and that model is exactly solvable, and one can grind out all sorts of interesting things. One of the main interests in, 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 uh, in uh, solving the C equal to one matrix model was that if you could solve it, and, and you could do it here, 
you could perhaps answer some important questions in, in the dual two-dimensional string theory, including questions about, uh, uh, you know, uh, questions about, let's say, black hole physics and other important That's, that's what I say here. Um, the C equal to matrix, one matrix model is unitary and dual to two dimensional string theory, where the Liouville mode becomes a space dimension. So if there's a black hole solution in two dimensional string theory, then we can address some of the important problems of black hole physics. So in two dimensional string theory, uh, therefore a search uh, for a black hole solution uh, was launched by Spenta, which is, uh, students, and in fact, they succeeded in finding in dilaton gravity uh, a two-dimensional uh, black hole. It turned out, however, that this eventually did not go very far, perhaps because two-dimensional dilaton gravity is too simple. Further success actually came from higher dimensions, and that is the Next project, important project that Spenta launched into. Strominger and Waffa had presented a calculation of black hole entropy using B brain microstates and Boltzmann's formula. Uh, calculation of Hawking radiation was also there. So, what was done in this work was to do a calculation of the absorption cross section both from the microscopic picture and from the classical gravity picture. And it was shown that these two agree, modulo a constant, which also got fixed later and was shown to be the, exactly the desired constant. So these, the importance of these, this work was that, uh, together with the other contributions, was that it confirmed the D-brain modeling of a near extremal black hole and Hawking radiation. And, and played a role in finally arriving at Maldacena's ADS CFT convention. After this, Spenta, uh, you know, as a, as a sort of big program launched into uh, a, a long effort to, um, to understand comprehensively uh, the, the microscopic modeling of uh, near extremal black holes in the context of 2D gray space. And this is captured uh, in, in, the, in the papers that I have uh, picked up and listed here uh, with his, uh, with uh, Fawad Hassan, uh, uh, with other collaborators. And eventually resulted in a, a physics report. By 97, I think, everybody was, uh, uh, everybody was swept off by the Maldasena conjecture of ADS-CFT. Therefore, it was natural for uh, us as well to start looking at consequences of this conjecture uh, for, um, for black holes and other examples. In this paper, Spenta uh, and others looked at uh, aspects of semi-classical strings, uh, to the, the integrability aspects of semi-classical st strings, and argued that, in fact, there are infinite number of uh, conserved charges in this, in this uh, setting, in the ADS-5 cross S-5 setting, thereby uh, giving rise to the hope that uh, the quantum theory, if that also satisfies infinite number of conservation laws, uh, is uh, integrable. Using the ADS-CFT correspondence, Spenta went on to study um, uh, other situations. And I have listed two papers here that I think are important. Uh, one is the finite temperature effective action 
for ADS5 black holes. And the other is black hole string transition for small short shell black holes in ADS5 cross S5. Uh, both of these um, actually use uh, the, uh, the large end techniques of which Spenta, which Spenta had mastered in, uh, in Chicago. And uh, what they show in these papers is that the, the small black hole to string transition in ADS5 bulk is really in the boundary theory, uh, just the third order gross wadia witten process. By the ADS-CFT duality, uh, ADS-CFT duality basically also implies fluid gravity duality. So uh, if the duality is true, you might want to ask questions about uh, uh, fluid, especially turbulent fluid, uh, and might want to know whether gravity has something to say about that uh, question, which has, uh, which has uh, eluded an answer for the last uh, 100 years or more. So this paper, Forced fluid dynamics from gravity precisely asked that question and built up the correspondence between stirred fluid and, uh, and bulk gravity. In this investigation, what Spenta and Shiraz and collaborators showed uh, that is that there is a universal uh, limit, non-relativistic limit, uh, in which you get of the, of the relativistic hydrodynamic equations. Uh, which gives you precisely the Navier-Stokes equation. Now, in recent years, Spenta has been working on churn simons theories coupled to matter, again with uh, Shiraz and his uh, uh, group. And in a series of papers, they have uncovered a very remarkable duality uh, this duality is between fermionic matter coupled to churn simons and bosonic matter coupled to churn simons. And basically, uh, the uh, exchange is level and rank between the two theories. And not, only, uh, uh, not only is this uh, remarkable duality, uh, 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 you know, these works have revealed that remarkable duality. They have also found, um, they have also found some rather uh, unusual properties of the scattering matrices. Um, so the scattering matrices for, uh, for fermions in the fermionic theory and bosons in the bosonic theory are related to each other uh, by level rank transposition, but they obey very uh, rather unusual mo uh, modified crossing relations. And these are dictated by unitarity. And I, I think Spenta is still uh, working on these problems. He's also working on uh, and thinking about uh, other interesting problems like the SYK model uh, because of the potential to understand something about black hole physics. And, uh, uh, and uh, I know for sure that for Spenta, this is, uh, it's, it's like, uh, you know, in cricketing parlance, you say um, there's, a, there's a drinks break, and uh, he is he's just rearing to come back and resume his innings. Um, in the morning, David uh, sort of gave an advice to him that 65 is, the, <laughs> is not the end, it is the beginning. I know that he is actually rearing to go all the time, <laughs> and it's very inspiring and very, um, very uh, encouraging to see that. So, congratulations, Spenta. And um, I have been very fortunate to, uh, to, to, to be associated uh, with you, and I have seen you very closely over three and a half uh, decades in action, so to speak, uh, and admired and uh, felt inspired by your energy and your enthusiasm for science, for uh, your passion for high quality science. <clears throat> and, uh, and I hope and wish uh, that 
that uh, enthusiasm, that you maintain that enthusiasm and, and go to higher levels from there. Thank you very much.